as we mentioned in our previous video about dry powder, dry powder refers to money that has been raised in order to make future investments, but is not yet spent. As of June 30th, 2022, dry powder amongst alternative investments was $3.6 trillion. This includes buyouts, venture capital, real estate, growth equity, infrastructure, direct lending, distressed PE, secondaries, and other alternative investment. With all of this money raised looking for deals, one would think that the competition for deals will drive up multiples. Well, that would be true in normal circumstances, as was true at the time of our last video on dry powder. But as one of my predictions for private equity in 2023, I believe that we will see lower multiples. In this video, we will be giving three predictions for the private equity industry in 2023. Prediction number one is that there will be lower multiples in private equity. Prediction number two is that there will be an increase in flexible structures, such as distress, special situations, and tactical opportunities funds. And prediction number three is that non-sexy industries will attract assets. And we'll end the video with a final thought. So let's get started with our first prediction that there will be lower multiples in private equity. Even though there is more dry powder competing for deals, rising interest rates will lower the multiples paid in private equity. The private equity industry has benefited from low interest rates over the past decade. Debt has been cheap which has allowed private equity firms to put more leverage on their deals. If interest rates continue to rise, well, interest payments will rise and the interest coverage ratio will decrease, resulting in private equity firms' reduced ability to put as much leverage on deals as they did before. We talked about this in more detail in our video titled, How Will Changing Interest Rates Affect Leverage Buyouts LBOs? So please check that out for more details. Well, if private equity firms are not able to use as much leverage on deals, well, multiples will drop. But there is another effect of rising interest rates, and that's the opportunity cost of investors' capital. Over the past decade, or even more, investors have been shifting their assets away from traditional low-interest investment options because of the need to achieve a certain target return and private equity has been able to meet that need. Well, if we will be in a lower return environment for private equity in the future, and a higher return environment for asset classes that are based on interest rates, well, this will also put pressures on private equity multiples. With all that said, there's also the factor of inflation, which we will address in our next two predictions. So let's move on to prediction number two. There will be an increase in flexible structures, such as distress, special situations, and tactical opportunities funds. With inflation as high as it is, interest rates rising, and the potential of consumer demand decreasing, many businesses may be in a difficult situation. They may not be able to pass through the cost of inflation. They may not be able to support the payments of the floating rate loans, and their customers may have less disposable income to spend. If that happens, we may see many companies under distress, and the best private equity funds to help with these companies are funds that have expertise to turn around faltering assets, and flexibility to structure win-win structures that benefit both the buyers and the sellers. Distressed funds have expertise to help turn around assets and special situations and tactical opportunities funds have the flexibility to structure deals in a win-win structure that benefits both the buyer and the seller. With that said, 
it's not just distressed special situations and tactical opportunities funds that you'll see asking for more flexibility. When a private equity fund raises capital, even though the fund may have a specific mandate based on sector, geography, and size, in the mandate, the private equity fund may negotiate with investors to have flexibility to invest a certain portion of the capital raised in opportunistic investments that are not completely aligned with the strategy. I bet with the rapidly changing economic situation that we are in, those flexible portions will be a lot higher than they were in the past. So let's move on to prediction number three. Non-sexy industries will attract assets. There is a good chance that we're heading to a recession. Or as finance professionals will say, there may be a softening in the economy. Remember the tech bubble? Remember the financial crisis? Well, in those times, while there was a leading asset class that fell dramatically, such as tech in 2000 and real estate in 2008, many other asset classes fell alongside tech and real estate in those respective years. With that said, certain industries that offer necessities still performed okay. These industries are not sexy and don't make headlines, but they do protect your assets. Healthcare was okay. People still need to take care of their health. Consumer staples were okay. People still need to shop at places like grocery stores. And utilities were okay. People still need heat and power. While I believe non-sexy industries will attract assets, please don't forget that when investing in any industry, you need to look at many other factors outside of the general economy. For example, some healthcare companies may be overvalued because of the overhyped demand caused by the recent COVID-19 pandemic. And some utilities companies may be hurting because of the dramatic increase in costs caused by the current energy crisis, where these costs are not easily passed on to customers. But overall, I believe that you'll see investors flock into industries that are not sexy and perform resilient in downturns. Now, here's a final thought. Over the past few years, there has been a lot of hype around private growing assets that don't make money. Many companies and funds have raised investor capital using overly optimistic projections that are based on non-realistic economic growth assumptions. Investors, my recommendation is that when looking at investments in 2023, please protect your portfolio. Diversify your assets. Don't put all your eggs in one basket, unless you're investing in yourself. Invest in non-sexy sectors or even business models that will prove to be resilient in a downturn. And please stop investing in companies that are better at making promises than making money. In this video, we gave you three predictions for the private equity industry in 2023. Prediction number one is that there will be lower multiples in private equity. Prediction number two is that there will be an increase in flexible structures such as distress, special situations, and tactical opportunities funds. And prediction number three is that non-sexy industries will attract assets. Do you have predictions for the private equity industry in 2023? If so, please share them in the comments below.